We're now at lesson 14.2a and we're going to talk about polygons in the coordinate plane. A polygon is a closed plane figure formed by three or more line segments that meet only at their endpoints. A square is a polygon because it's a closed figure formed by four line segments. This is not a polygon because it's not a closed figure. We have an opening here. A vertex is a point where two sides of a polygon meet. The plural for vertex is vertices. A square has four vertices. The vertices of a polygon can be represented as ordered pairs. Each vertex of the polygon is a point with x and y coordinates. The polygon can be drawn on a coordinate plane by graphing the points of each vertex and connecting them with line segments. When labeling the points, they need to be in order, going clockwise or counterclockwise, starting from any vertex. So for this one, it started here and we went A, B, C, D. We could also start here and go A, B, C, D counterclockwise. We could even start here and do A, B, C, D, as long as we're going counterclockwise or clockwise in order. Points A, B, C, and D form a trapezoid when connected to each other with line segments. Points A, B, C, and D are the vertices of a trapezoid. Sophia wants to make a pattern of two different shapes on a quilt. She first graphs the shapes on a coordinate plane. So we have a hexagon and a rhombus. She plotted the points for the rhombus. She's got points A at 3 for X and 5 for Y. For B, it's at 4 for X and 3 for Y. For C, it's at 3 for x and 1 for y, and for d, it's at 2 for x and 3 for y. Then she plotted the points for the blue shape, and we've got points p at negative 2 for x and 2 for y, q is at 0 for x, if this is negative 1 and that's 1, so that must be 0. It's at 0 for x and 2 for y. Point R is at 1 for x and 0 for y. If this is negative 1 on y and that's a positive 1, then that's 0. That's the origin, isn't it? For point S, it's at 0 for x and negative 2 for y. For point T, it's at negative 2 for x and negative 2 for y, and point u is at negative 3 for x and 0 for y. Then, Sophia connected the points in order with line segments. She connected a to b, b to c, c to d, and d to a. She made the rhombus. And she connected p to q, to r, to s, to t, to u, back up to p. And there's four points for A, B, C, D, and they form a quadrilateral. And there's six points, P, Q, R, S, T, U, that form a hexagon. Each ordered pair is a vertex, and we can count the points, or sets of ordered pairs, to classify, that means name, a polygon. We know there's four points, it must be a quadrilateral. If there's six points, it must be a hexagon because a hexagon has six vertices. By counting the number of points, one, two, three, four, five, six, that will tell us the type of polygon that it is. It's telling us to circle the polygon formed by the points. And remember, we don't need to plot these points. You could if you wanted to, but we just count. We have one, two, three points. That means there's three vertices. Well, that must be a triangle. A triangle has three vertices. Here we have one, two, three, four, five points. That means there must be five vertices. Well, that must be a pentagon. So if you said pentagon, you're right. 
It wouldn't be a hexagon. A hexagon has six vertices. So each ordered pair is a vertex. We can count the points or sets of ordered pairs to classify a polygon. A polygon has the same number of vertices as its number of sides. We finished the first part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the second part, finding perimeter in the coordinate plane. I hope the rest of your day is good, and please join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.